All right, good evening, good evening, and welcome to our Bible study. It's Wednesday, November the 18th, and it's 7 o'clock, and Michelle and I are ready to uh, go over our our adult Bible study for the week, and we're going live streaming on um, Facebook, so welcome. I'm glad you're with us. Uh, Later on, this will be posted on our YouTube channel, so you can uh, watch, so those that don't have uh, Facebook. Facebook can watch it as well. Uh, but before we get into the lesson, there's a couple of things that that we need to go over. You know, just kind of updating uh, certain things so that you know what's happening. Um, actually, today, um, well, actually yesterday, yesterday Michelle and I pre-recorded uh, the lesson that I was going to have broadcasted today at this time because I was scheduled for a procedure at um, Fresno. Um, Medical center or whatever they call it now. It was criti- critical care unit. In the critical care, care unit. unit, they were gonna, they were gonna do a, um, angiogram, I guess, or something like that. Anyway, <laughs> bottom line is I'm having a little bit of some heart problems and a little bit of chest pain, so they're checking me out. But the doctor got sick, and he they called um, last night and let us know that. Uh, the, my appointment today was canceled, so they're going to reschedule it uh, later on. Uh, hopefully not on Thanksgiving, because I ain't going to show up. But anyway, uh, keep me, keep me in prayer. I, I I know that I don't ask for prayer as often as I should, but yeah, keep me in prayer. And, and I'm just it was a little disturbing because I'm I got myself prepared for this, and then um, it didn't happen. So, um, yeah, just maybe God's going to do a miracle. Maybe God's going to heal me. I don't know. All I know is that, uh, yeah, sometimes, uh, can I go ahead and say, yeah, Michelle's, I know she'd appreciate it, but sometimes, you know, uh, the the pressure of ministry can be strong. And uh, so I need I need your prayers, and I need uh, to have some um, some covering and some peace. And uh, especially with uh, so many other things that are going on. And that brings us up to the next subject uh, at hand. And that is uh, the reality that um, we are now again in the purple stage for um, the COVID-19 and, and all that. Uh, and and all that. So um, we're, we're still having services. We're going to do our regular service like we like we usually do and is it not going on yeah on my phone i have it okay so uh, anyway um so we'll do our regular service and and uh you know we're we off obviously we're going to live stream because we 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 always live stream and we're going to continue to live stream even when all this is over with um and the question comes up oh are we closing? And the quest, the answer is really simple. Look, um, we're not going to turn anybody away. If if you feel the need to be with with the church in in uh, in the building and with other believers, you know our worship team will be there. the uh, The tech team will be there. Michelle will be there. And uh, but I'm going to leave that uh, in uh, up to you. You already know. I'm not going to go through all that. We always sanitize. You know that. But the the reality is that we will serve God. We will preach the word online, live, however, uh, you know, through YouTube, pre-recorded, whatever it is. We need to get the word out. So we're not going to stop and uh, and um, make things more difficult for you. Oh, we'll leave it in your hands. That same thing that happened the last time, that uh, we we just started having service. We continued to have our live stream service, and people continued to show up. And I guess that's about the way it's going to be. Uh, I'm not being rebellious. I'm not a rebel, and I'm not trying to make a political statement against uh, uh, the state of California. I'm just trying to serve God. Is, is that cool with you? I'm just trying to serve God. Huh? Mom, Michelle, that's what we're trying to do. Yes. Trying to do the best that we can do in these difficult times. So, um, with that being said, let's we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, we have our our uh, phone number up five five nine four two nine five four three one. 
and that you can text a question if you like or if you want while you're watching this and and uh, I can see already there's quite a few comments being left a lot of people saying hey and all that good stuff and so that's what you can do you can you can leave a comment or a question for Michelle on on the online on the on our uh, live stream or you can text it directly to me and then that's on my iPad but um but with that being said I think it's about time we get going, huh? Yes. Amen. So let, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for, uh, for uh, the opportunity to share your word and to encourage people that are watching right now. I thank you for the prayers that are going out on my behalf. I thank you for the most wonderful wife I could ever imagine having who loves me and worries about me and supports me and does all she can to make me uh, and, and the ministry calling that I have in my life a success and as it touches so many lives. So Lord, we want to speak clearly. We want to help people and we want to, your name to be glorified. May you be pleased with our study tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So last Sunday I went back and on uh, the New Beginnings uh, study that that we that I started a couple of weeks ago, uh, and uh, so we're at New Beginnings Part Two, and the New Beginnings Part Two starts with this verse, John one verses three through five. Mm -hmm. Through him, all things were made; without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness but the darkness has not understood it. And so we're talking about new beginnings, but we're also talking about Jesus, keeping Jesus the center of our new beginnings. If you listen to that verse, especially verse four, you know, on Sunday, I don't think I even mentioned verse four. I read verse four, but I preached the message as, as God gave it to me. And, but, but that verse four tonight has really jumped out at me. In him was life. You see, you can't have life out. You can't have true life and true peace and true happiness without Jesus Christ. And that life was the light of men. When you turn the light on, you can see better. Amen. And that's the, <laughs> so true, man. And, and I'm so thankful that when the light goes on, I can see. And so right now, I want the light of Jesus Christ to shine so bright that you all can see. You all can see what's what's happening. You all can see what you're going through, and you all can have the strength and the purpose in your life to to uh, have this successful, happy life. Amen. 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 So Michelle's uh, got this new thing. If she doesn't have anything to say, she just says "Amen" to me. <laughs> <laughs> so number one, last last Sunday we talked about uh, G Jesus made everything in the beginning, and that's what we focused on last week was Jesus being the beginning of everything. And I have to tell you honestly, um, for me, Jesus was the beginning. I did everything that I was supposed to do as far as going to school, finding a career, buying a house, having a family, marrying uh, the love of my life and all that good stuff. And But really, life really began for me when I met Jesus Christ. I knew about Jesus because of my, my background and because uh, of growing up in the Catholic Church and, and hearing the word and, and, and knowing uh, a lot about uh, the things of Christ, but not till I made that commitment to Christ to really commit my life to his life, to follow him, man, it started, it was a brand new life. You know, the Bible says the old, you're a new creation in Christ, Christ. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, honestly, man, my life started brand new. And it was so, and it's been such an amazing life. It hasn't been an easy life. Sometimes it's actually very difficult. But um, it's it's fulfilling. And I can't see having it any other way. What about you, babe? Yes, when we did accept Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, at the beginning, it seemed like nothing changed. Well, nothing changed because we 
we only went to church when we got got up on a Sunday early enough to go to church. It wasn't a priority when we didn't know the Lord. And uh, it started to change after, you know, I started seeing d different things in Dave first. And uh, then it's just has been growing and continue to grow until the time God calls us home. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we went on uh, last Sunday and we talked about, and I talked about Colossians. But I just want us to look at one part of this verse. I'll read the whole thing to you, but I just want to look at one part. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Now we're talking about Jesus. He created all things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether they are kings or lords, rulers or powers. Everything has been created through him and for him. Now Sunday, I stayed on that quite a bit to talk about for him. But we're going to talk about verse 18. He existed before everything and everything holds and holds everything together. He is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, the first to come back to life so that he would have first place in everything. But I want us to take a take a, another look at at that verse 18. 18, number first part of verse 18. He's the head of the church. Let me help you. And a lot of people misunderstand this. You know, Pastor David or whoever the pastor is, whoever the shepherd is, whoever the, the priest is, we are not the head of the church. Jesus Christ is the head of the Christian church. Jesus is the head of New Joy Church. Jesus is the head of Cornerstone. Jesus is the head of uh, uh, Fresno Christian Assembly. Jesus, not the pastors. Please, please, please understand that. Our job as ministers, both Michelle and I and, and my pastor friends out there, our job is to point you to Jesus. Our job is not to run your life. Amen. Our, <laughs> mm -hmm. our job is to make available the one who knows how to run your life. So let's keep that in perspective. And and now most of them, it used to be pretty bad back in the 80s, I think. I think maybe back in the 80s or 90s, it was there was a problem that I saw in, in many churches where the pastor was being elevated. The pastor was put on a pedestal and whatever he said goes. And, and it was almost like Jesus wasn't the head of the church. The pastor was the head. But no, it can't be that way. It, it, it not for it to be right with God. He's the head of the church. Jesus Christ is the head. We're the body. We're the body. Sometimes uh, I uh, I'm supposed to be the mouthpiece, maybe, but sometimes I feel like I'm the the little toe that just got stubbed. But <laughs> it doesn't matter. Whatever part of the body you are, you're here's the key. Figure out what part of the body you are, and never forget you're connected to the head. The head, the brain, tells you what to do. Christ is the head of the church. He's the one doing the thinking for us. He's the one directing the bones and, and the muscles and, and taking and helping us to take action. We're his body. He is the beginning of the church. He is first place in everything. So that brings up a subject and maybe this is not eh, it's, I'm going to bring it up. You see, there's some people, there are some people, oh, let me use right grammar. There are some people who have disconnected from their local church uh, because of um, that old excuse, well, uh, the, the, the church is just run by men. The church is corrupt. The church is messed up. Well, you know what? Yes, <laughs> there are a lot of churches with a lot of problems. There are a lot of churches with a lot of people that have a lot of problems. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So to disconnect from the church is a very unhealthy thing to do. And I'm not trying to trick you and manipulate you into coming to our church. I'm say saying that it's difficult to live out your Christian life separated from the body. You know, all, all, of, all of the body is important. You know, when, when I stub my toe, like I mentioned my toe, I've 
done that more. I fractured my toe. And when that toe was fractured, oh, the rest of my body felt it. You know what I'm saying? It hurt. So you don't understand. Pulling away because you think that the church is going to hurt you, you're actually hurting the yes. body of believers that need you, that can help you, but also the people that you can help, the people that you can minister to. You need the body. Let's stay mm -hmm. together. I just want to say that there are churches out there that the pastor does everything, and that you really need to know your word to, to check, to, to check if he's doing what the word says or is he doing what he wants to do? And when you're in a church that they put the pastor on a pedestal, then it's time for you to check check out because it's not yeah. going to be healthy for you because uh, God has given you the choice of, number one, accepting him as your personal savior, and two, learning the word so you know what that pastor up there he's human he will make mistakes and if you know the word uh you can wait for your time if god wants you to to ask him go for it i mean you shouldn't be ashamed but you should do it in, in a respectful way don't stop the whole church service and say see you you're nothing but blaspheming of the Holy Spirit or whatever they want to call it. But anyway, um, and because God wants you to check what what the service is, what's going on with the word, that doesn't mean we're saying, yeah, go into a church and disrespect everything. No, you need to find the balance of being able to be respectful and to be able to share what you feel what the word's telling you or what the spirit is telling you and on one-on-one -on -one, not don't grab a whole ton of people and go up to the pastor no first we have to do by what matthew says you go what you go by yourself first and then if if right. he admits he's wrong you won the brother over you know but if he doesn't, then you take two or three people. And then if they still doesn't listen, then you take it to the church. But usually right. you don't get, they don't usually get it to that far. Most of the time, not always, but most of the time. But I, I just felt like the Lord wanted me to say, don't disrespect my, my church. Right, Unless, yeah. That yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah, if you have a problem with someone, you know what the Bible says. You go to that person first, mm -hmm. alone, just the two of you. Then you res resolve it. And besides that, we we've always said that that our door is open. You mm -hmm. you have a question. You have something that you don't understand. You can always come to me. You can come to Michelle. And uh, but yeah, but the worst thing that you actually can do is you can go to someone else. If you like, like for instance, I say something that you don't agree with. And then you decide that you're going to go tell um, one of the ushers or one of the other uh, uh, church, leaders, members, church yeah. members and stuff like that. That That is no longer a valid question because now it's taken the form of gossip. Mm -hmm. So And uh, and I'm thankful that, that uh, we used to have that problem years ago, and it was, it was a lot. And, uh, it, yeah, you know that people are gossiping about you when you're the pastor— and you walk by them and they stop talking? That's happened. <laughs> That's a dead giveaway. That's a dead giveaway, my brother. So anyway, yeah, and, and we're, we're, we are definitely approachable. If you need to come talk to us, we'll, we'll listen for sure. Amen. Amen. So that, uh, that takes us on to the next point that I, wanna, to, to, that I mentioned on Sunday. Number two, Jesus is our light for a fulfilled life. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. See, one of the things I wanted uh, I wanted to mention on that is to have a fulfilled life, you need to follow Jesus. You need to walk in the Word. You, you need to apply the Scriptures to yourself, and you need to let God bless you. Then you, you've got to understand one thing, though. It's very important. God blesses you so you can bless someone else. 
Let me say that again. I'm talking the Bible to you. God will bless you, but it doesn't stop there. And thank God that he's blessed me. Thank God that 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 I uh, we have been blessed and other people. Um, but other people get blessed through us. But that's the point. The purpose is that me getting blessed and me hanging on to that blessing until Jesus comes. It is for me to be blessed. And through that blessing, I can pass on a blessing to someone else. I can pass on whatever God has taught me and whatever God is doing in me. So, so it, Christianity is not uh, this you and you alone uh, so you can live happily ever after. No, we, we need to pass it on. You got the fulfilled life? Pass it on. You got, you got blessed? Let somebody know about it. Share with someone else. Pass it on so they get they get uh, ministered to. I think that um, Michelle is real good at that. You sisters are blessed. Let me tell you something. <laughs> and, you know, and and some of you um, may have had experiences at other churches. Maybe you are transfer into our church, but um, not every pastor's wife sends out as many devotionals daily devotionals as Michelle does. She gets on her phone and she gets that devotional that ministers to her and she sends it to you, you gals, because she loves you and she wants you blessed. She takes the blessing and passes it on. You need to pass the blessing on to someone else. Th this is what you shouldn't do, okay? I hope I don't hurt any feel anybody's feelings, but if, if the Word of God through Michelle's devotional blesses you, don't text Michelle and tell her, you should send it to this sister. <laughs> you send it. If God put that sister on your Lord, heart, yeah. you pass it on. Amen. Now, that devotional that Michelle has is no longer hers. It's yours. It's mm -hmm. your word now because that word ministered to you. You pass it to another sister. Mm -hmm. And then let that sister pass it on to another sister. So, man, that almost sounds like that would be a really good sister act. Wait, did I say that? Yeah, Sister Act. Oh, help me, Jesus. So anyway, and it's not that Michelle can't, but everybody needs to be a participant in furthering the gospel. We mm -hmm. all need to do this. We all need to let our light shine, you know, and, and let it shine to everyone so everyone mm -hmm. can can see the light. Um well, I just want to say with the devotional, it started off with, as as I was going to the Lord, I told the Lord, I want to be an encourager. And just seeing him on Sundays and Wednesdays, used to be Wednesdays, um, to me, it didn't seem enough. So um, I got a, a little devotional book. And I was typing it right out of the book to send to people. It started off small. Now I think I have 35 or 35, 40 women that I send every morning, Monday through Friday. Wow. And uh, just to encourage them for the day, you know, Lord knows they could have been, uh, uh, woke, wake up really late and they're trying to get to, to church, uh, to, to work. And then they'll see my texts and, you know, it could be an encouraging word because they feel all bad you know, uh, for being late and stuff. And, you know, things happen in our lives. Yeah. Every day is yeah. a new, fresh day. So mm -hmm. I do send it out Monday through Friday. Even when I go on vacation, uh, I'll do Monday through Fridays. Um, I don't do the weekends, but uh, I do Monday through Friday. So. Yeah, and I mm -hmm. believe the sisters appreciate your Monday through Friday mm -hmm. because it's ministering to them. It's really helping yes. them. Yes, yes. So. So let me ask you a question. Not Michelle, you guys. Let me ask you, you know. And I see, I'm looking at Michelle's phone and I see people's names popping up and, mm -hmm. and that are watching this. Let me ask you a question. First, are you letting God fill your life with his love? Let God fulfill you. Let Jesus fulfill your life. Then are you passing it on? What are you doing to bless someone else? What are you doing to make someone else's life fulfilled? We have a lot of different uh, 
venues that we can do this. We can do it like Nishad does through a text message. Every week you can get on Facebook. I, I, um, I haven't done it uh, this week, but I try to post a scripture or an encouraging word of some sort. I wanted to do uh, one of my thoughts from my heart today, and I, did, I really just didn't get a chance to get to it. But, you know, there's things that I'm trying to do to encourage people. And, and uh, so what are you doing to encourage someone else? And um, you say, well, Pastor David, uh, I don't, I don't know what to do. Well, this is what you can do. If you have a, a, a phone and you have the, what's that Bible program you like, Michelle? Um, gateway. A gate, gateway? Gateway. Yeah, Gateway. Gateway gives you a, a verse for the day every, every day. day. Yeah, every yeah, day. That other mm -hmm. Bible app, I can't remember what the name of it, but they actually give you a scripture on top of of a picture, a beautiful picture. You can copy and paste that onto your Facebook or copy and paste that onto uh, your phone and send it to someone. And then, uh, I don't know how in the world I did this, but I uh, Michelle's great at Pinterest. She goes to Pinterest all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I says, man, okay, can't, oh, man, that's messed up. I can't say this because I feel like a chauvinistic pig. But I said to Michelle, ah, you know, Pinterest, that's for women. <laughs> and, you know, so there's a lot of sisters on there. Well, you know what I'm doing now? I will get an idea in my head. I think God wants to, uh, a, a scripture verse on power. So I'll go to my Pinterest page, uh, and then I'll type in scripture about power. And some of these nice pictures come up, and I try to find a manly picture so I can post that, but <laughs> picture on uh, a scripture on encouragement. So I'm getting them from somebody else. I'm getting them from Pinterest. But as long as it helps you, as long as it encourages you, mm -hmm. as long as it's just a, a word or two to help you become uh, that person with a fulfilled life, that's what I want to do. I I want to keep myself myself filled, but I want to pass on to you something that will fill your life and also give you a fulfilled life. And one of the main things that you can do uh, in having a fulfilled life is ministering to someone else. And very simply through a text or a picture, whatever it, whatever phone it is. Phone call. A phone call. Ooh, going old school. Yeah, mm -hmm. phone call. Mm -hmm. An email. Email. Yeah. yeah. So many ways you can do it. Yeah. yeah. So my challenge to you is just do it. Amen. Do it. Reach out to somebody mm -hmm. else and help them. I and think as a Christian woman, I feel like we're running the race. And the type of race I'm running is a relay race. I what I what I get from the word, I like to pass it on, you know. So, you know, I've never won a race in my I never even like to run, period. But that's how I see my life is uh, I'm in a race, a race for the Lord, and I just love to be in this relay race, yeah. relaying it to other people. Amen, that is. Yeah, well, it's not a sprint, that's for sure. Yeah. It's not a sprint. It's it's not a commercial. But the rest, you know how many come commercials get on your, you, you'll watch a half an hour show, and seven minutes of it is a commercial. But our life should be, for lack of a better way of putting it, our life should be an advertisement of the goodness of God 24-7 so people can see and know God's goodness and turn to the Lord and, and have that life, that life that's more abundant. But I just want to take, uh, take this moment for a shout out. I never wanted to, I never thought I could do something like that. I met this one woman that had made such a big impact in my life, and uh, her name is Naomi Cox, and I always said, wow, I want to be just like her. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, uh, Naomi is a wonderful, uh, powerful woman. Like absolutely, yeah, yes. So, and see, that's but that's the thing. Someone else passing it to Michelle. Uh -huh. Now Michelle is passing it down to someone else, awesome. and and it keeps going and keeps going. That's mm -hmm. that's so so wonderful. And you guys never know. You might be able to pass it down. I want to pass it down to mm -hmm. you, but I also want to pass it down to my uh, my grandsons, Elijah and Ethan. I want to pass it to my granddaughters, Lauren, Aubrey, 
and Madison. And Madison. I'm going by age. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and because I love them so much, but at the same time, there's people that are not blood relatives that are very, very. They're like family to me. Amen. They really are, mm-hmm. you know. And and I, I I hesitate to call out names because. Uh, I don't want someone to say, well, how come you didn't say my name? <laughs> yeah, you totally. don't like me, so I'm not going to say anybody's name. Yeah. But you know who you are. You know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we're going to move on to, to, to number three. Um, number three uh, from last Sunday. We are all, we all are called to share the light of Jesus. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. So that's so, so important that we shine the light of Jesus wherever you are and wherever you go. And, um, you know, I want to read the the other verse and then I'm, Michelle will also comment on this. But look at Matthew uh, because, I'm, well, I'll just tell you what I'm going to do. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do uh, people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So, brothers, sisters in Christ, we are the light to the world. We are the light of the world, the true light that shines uh, through Jesus Christ in our life so other people can see uh, that light. But... um. Last night, Michelle, like I mentioned earlier, last night Michelle and I pre-recorded a, a lesson. In fact, this 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 lesson that we're doing tonight, it's really different than what we recorded uh, yesterday because the Holy Spirit's in charge, and well, we didn't know that we were even going to be here. I thought we were. I was still going to be in the hospital, but here's the deal. One part of yesterday's lesson uh, was this: You are the light of the world. And uh, we're supposed to let our light shine. But the only way that you can be the light, listen, if you is if you stay in the light. We're supposed to shine our light to dispel darkness. But here's an issue that really breaks my heart as a pastor. There are believers, there are Christians, there are, there are truly, truly followers of Jesus Christ but, you know, they're going to heaven, no doubt. But for whatever reason, maybe they were hurt by a minister. Maybe they were hurt by someone else in the church. Or maybe they thought God was going to do something and he never did it. Here's the thing. You still have to stay in the light. You still have to keep following Jesus so that light will keep shining on you and through you. But here's the, the thing. So many people... Uh, that get hurt, stop going to church. Mm -hmm. And they start going their own way. And they they move from that straight and narrow to just slightly off to the side. And if you continue on your own path, you will eventually lead yourself into darkness. Because the light shines from Jesus Christ. But if you're walking away from Christ, and even though you may not even know it, you may not even realize it. Well, you know, well, when's the last time you fellowshiped with another believer? When was the last time you went to church? When was the last time you picked up your Bible? And you don't know it, but you're heading for darkness. Now, I am not saying that you're going to lose your salvation. I am not saying you're going to go to hell. What I am saying is, is you're going to mess yourself up because you can't see in the dark. You can't see in the dark. Oh, yes, I can. I'm doing my own thing. I know where I'm going. Oh, yeah? Well, tonight, when you, (laughs) tonight after you turn off all the lights and head to bed, close your eyes and see where you go. I know where I did the other night. I got up. Never mind why I got up. I was asleep. I got up and I ended up in the closet <laughs> because I had no light and I'm trying to get out, out the bedroom. Instead, I'm in the closet. <laughs> no, I know those jokes you're saying. Stop it. But here's the thing. Let me help you stay in the light. Stay around believers that have the light. Because you, 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 yeah, you still, well, I still believe in God, but why is my life so tough? Because you pulled yourself away from the light, and now you don't even know it. 
but the light has been dimmed. You know what? What you know? It's it's like these glasses. Right now, I can see pretty clearly, but in the sun, they start to shade, and before you know it, they're they're not real dark. Mm. But I don't see everything perfectly because they've been colored by um, by the, sh the 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 tint in my glasses. Mm -hmm. Sometimes sin will tint your vision. Sometimes, well, all the time, sin will tint your vision as far as that goes. But bad decisions and going in the wrong way and going away from the church instead of to the church, you get yourself in a place where, yeah, it feels like I'm lost. I don't know what I'm doing. Come back. Come back home. Come back to the light. Come back to Jesus. He will forgive you. He loves you. And he will shine that light bright on your life. I just want to say, as we are the light, as we allow the Lord to use us to be that light, that guiding light, you know what? The Bible is very clear that we all fall short. And if we make mistakes, we should not stay down and not do, not do anything. We got to get up, shake the dirt off, and keep going. Repent, whatever you need to do. And keep going because you know what? Um, there's so many eyes that are watching you that you don't even realize. And how we act, uh, especially the world's ready to knock us down, mm -hmm. you know. But as long as we keep our eyes on the Lord, no matter what your circumstances is, and, and that lying devil wants us to... Rem he wants to keep reminding us of all the, the stuff that has us in bondage and all the bad things that has happened in our life. And he wants us to play it over in our head so we can uh, be saying, oh, why should we even do it? Look, look what happened in my life. You know, no. When we accept Jesus Christ as our pers personal Savior, we are a new creature in Christ. The old has passed away. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to rebuke all those thoughts that aren't uh, being a light for the Lord you know yes we have testimonies for what God has brought us out of but we just don't stay in that we have to grow from a baby to a teenager mm -hmm. to an adult we have to grow if as long as you're reading and praying the word of God amen, amen. and every you don't you just don't grow automatically you've got to feed yourself you've got to exercise the word if you will you've got to build up your spiritual muscles and uh, being involved in a church uh, is is uh, is the, it's like going to the gym. You yeah. know, you don't if you know you 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 want to go to the gym, you want to exercise, you want to get stronger. Well, you need you need the spiritual gym. Amen. You need Jim Jesus. Come on now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so so uh, stay connected through live stream like you're doing now. Stay connected by personally contacting us. So we can minister to you and love you and encourage you, and uh, and then um, become part. If it's not, it doesn't even have to be us. There's some there's some really good pastors in Clovis and really good pastors in Fresno. So find yourself a place where you feel that you can grow and blossom in. And uh, amen. And uh, uh, so that's why we do what we do. And like I I said not too long ago that. God has placed us in Clovis, and we are a very unique ministry uh, to Clovis, and I think that that's exciting. And I want to wait till I'm praying for God to to bring a healing uh, to this COVID-19, so that we can get. But once all this is over, brothers and sisters, that you go to New Joy Church, you best be ready to get involved because we're going to put the pedal to the metal, and we're going to take the gospel out. Uh, full force, full force, because I believe revival is coming to us. Revival is coming to those who will um, pay the cost through prayer, through commitment, through uh, activities that, that bring about uh, a, a mighty move of God. Amen, Michelle? Amen. Amen. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about on Sunday, I did talk about on Sunday, was this, show mercy and love to those without the light of Jesus. Um, you're going to run into a lot of people. It's just, <laughs> you can run into a lot of people that 
they may say they know Jesus. They may say they, they go to church, but you know, you get into a little conflict, you get into a little problem. And before you know it, oh man, you just lost your religion. <laughs> Maybe they really aren't saviors because, you know, there's, there's always going to be people, well, I go to church. Well, I go to church. Um, yeah, okay. And how many of us have ever run into those CEO Christians? Oh, that sounds important, CEO. Uh, that's Christmas and Easter only. Uh -huh. Come on, Pastor D, don't, don't pick on me. I'm just telling you the truth. But here's the thing. We have this responsibility to show mercy. Responsibility to show mercy, show kindness. A responsibility to show love. You, why? Why do we have that responsibility? Why is that on us? Simple. Look at Titus 3, verse 4. When God our Savior revealed his kindness and love, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. There it is. We show mercy because Jesus showed us That's mercy. mercy. We show love because Jesus God showed love. We show kindness because God has been so kind to us. So we need to pass it on. You know, we don't we don't need to be getting rude and obnoxious and angry. Yes, sometimes we get angry. I I had to make a run to um, off Home Depot today. We're we're running out of paint. Uh, and we're painting. Uh, so we're just doing some repairs at, at the church today, and I ran out of paint. So I ran over to Home Depot. I didn't, they didn't have the paint I needed, so I was walking back to my car, and twice this little blue car, I think it was a Toyota, uh, I'm not going to say it was a female driver, but it was a female driver, but she was looking at me like she don't even know what I'm talking about. I didn't tell her. I said, why, why bother her? Twice she came at me. I'm serious. I'm walking, and she's like, I don't care. And, and so, come on, lady. Uh, uh, I'm big, but I, I can't. I can't tangled with your car so i go okay i'm not gonna get mad i got into my car i pulled out i got onto the main uh little road to go out of the parking lot and she came flying around and almost hit my car she came flying around the corner not even looking uh at at anybody she just thought well you know she need to get in the store real bad oh uh, well and i honked but i didn't get i got upset but I didn't cuss at her. I honked to warn her that she was about to hit me. That That's what the horn is for. That little courtesy, courtesy honk. Courtesy honk. That courtesy. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> courtesy. That courtesy honk to warn her that, that she's, she's about to hit me. And then I was upset, but I didn't yell at her. I didn't flip her off. I didn't cuss. I just went on. And the funny thing is, uh, I honked at her. She stopped, and then she, she started up again at me for the second time. This woman, I don't know what her problem was, but I guess she thought I was in, I don't know. But the point is this. That situation, I think I handled it correctly. Protecting both of us from an accident. And then not losing my cool. So I'm going to show her kindness by not telling her, uh, you need to learn how to drive. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all would do that, wouldn't you? You need to learn how to drive. You honk the horn with one hand and... Give the, <laughs> so, the, the, the <laughs> your number one salute. Your number one salute? Yeah. Uh, no. But there's so many ways. Let somebody, you know, go in front of you. There's so many ways that we can show kindness. Yeah, but if I'm in the car, how does she know that I'm a Christian showing kindness? It's not always. They won't always even know it. They won't always even realize it. But you do. It's developing, listen to what I'm going to say, it's developing a lifestyle of showing mercy. It's developing a lifestyle of being kind. It's a developing a lifestyle of sharing God's love every day in every way. And I know it's hard, especially in these days. I know it's hard and, um, you know, and people are getting upset again um, over, over toilet paper. Yeah. You know, they're oh, getting all shook up over toilet paper and all, <laughs> all the money. toilet paper is gone well you know what you, you don't if you're running out of toilet paper come come to my hood come to the bottom there's a lot of toilet paper in the stores because <laughs> we can't afford to buy more than just one 
six pack. <laughs> That's why there's still toilet paper here. Yeah, they're not hogging <laughs> up all. We you can't can hog up it. a bunch of toilet paper. But again, I wouldn't do it. I'm not going to hog toilet paper because after all, I'm going to let God supply my daily bread. Oh, that was good. My daily bread. Amen. So show mercy. Wouldn't it be cool if we had a counter, a clicker, a mercy clicker, and every time we show somebody mercy, we click? Are we? Oh, man, look at that. Uh, wow, I showed mercy to 13 times this day. Oh, I didn't show mercy at all yesterday. Whoops. <laughs> you slipped. <laughs> yes, but it's something that we need to be aware of. It's something mm -hmm. that we need to be, be focused on. And uh, and then be appreciative when someone shows us mercy. mercy yes. Us kindness and us love. Mm -hmm. You got one more? You got something for us? One more thing? No, no, I... Um, I said amen. <laughs> <laughs> you said amen. Yeah, well, then I guess we're coming about to, to the end. I hope this has been a benefit to you. It's uh, uh, it's uh, what God puts on our heart that we share uh, on these Wednesday nights. And I, and I know um, if you have someone that you know, maybe you can share this with them through your Facebook page. Share it on yours. Maybe you can do a watch party and other people can see it. Or maybe you can just copy it and, and uh, send it to someone and uh, tomorrow uh, well now I'll take that back probably Friday I'll have it up on on uh, YouTube and it's easier to share and then it'll be on our website we have a new website newjoyclovis.com and uh, you can see our, our other lessons that we've done and then this Sunday we'll be live streaming 10 a.m. from New Joy Church uh, it'll be on my page and it'll also be on uh, 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 Ray uh, Renee Emilio's page too, so all the Renee Emil uh, Renee's friends can watch it, and and then you can share it. Man, the one thing that's really been blessing me is I've seen, you know, we're getting somebody will start watching a live stream and then they'll share it. I think I think a total we had a total of eight shares last Sunday, and man, that's so cool. Keep it up, keep it up, because we got to get the word out. Amen, sister. Amen. Michelle. Amen. So I thank you, honey. For your words of wisdom <laughs> and uh, do you have anything to say no. about dinner about di oh <laughs> okay good night <laughs> we're done i love you you guys will keep on bringing the word to you in spirit <laughs> and in truth i forgot we are done peace <laughs> we're out